Hey, what's up everyone? Richard here, and welcome to the fifth episode in my Payday 2, How to Kill series. In this installment, we take a look at the new addition to the police's arsenal, a tool for urban warfare, and arguably the most unforgiving enemy in-game, the SWAT turret. Remote sentry guns have existed for several decades now. Some of the earliest include the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, a radar-controlled 6-barreled 20mm gun designed to eliminate enemy missiles and aircraft directed towards NATO warships. In more recent years with the invasion of Iraq, the United States Army and Marine Corps needed a way of remotely operating pintle-mounted machine guns on their heavy vehicles, such as the Stryker and M1 tank. The result was CROWS, or Common Remotely Operated Weapon Station. This system allows gunners to remain inside a vehicle while engaging enemy forces, thus allowing them to remain safe. In-game, the sentry guns mounted on top of the SWAT MRAPs are likely a modified version of the CROWS 2 system, fitted with a large ballistic panel to protect the laser module on the front. While the CROWS system is operated via camera, they can often sport sighting lasers to improve accuracy. SWAT van turrets will only spawn on certain maps. These include Diamond Store, Hoxton Breakout Day 1, Bank Heists, Election Day 2, Framing Frame Day 2, Watchdogs Day 1, Four Stores, Go Bank, Firestarter Day 3, Hoxton Revenge, and finally, the Meltdown Heist. Depending on the heist, the vans will usually appear several minutes into the heist. On spawn, a large armored van will drive into the map and park in a predetermined spot. After a few seconds, the turret will deploy out of the top of the vehicle and begin targeting nearby players. Once operational, the turret will continue to fire at targets until it is either destroyed or forced to reload. The health of the turret is measured in two numbers, its shield health and its overall body health, and both will change depending on the difficulty of the heist. Overall health will start at 70,000 for both normal and hard, and increase to 275,000 on very hard, and then to 500,000 on overkill, and finally 700,000 on death wish. Shield health will be 1,000 for both normal and hard, and increase to 4,000 on very hard, 7,500 on overkill, and 10,000 on death wish. There are several rules for damaging the turret that will modify how each weapon works. Explosives will have a flat 7x multiplier to both the shield and the turret health and any shots that strike the exposed laser module of the turret will have a 200x damage multiplier, excluding of course explosives. Do note that the shield must be removed to receive this 200x multiplier. The shield also has rules regarding how it receives damage. It will still have the 7x damage multiplier, however for every hit it takes, it can only receive 750 damage. Meaning hitting it with an RPG would theoretically deal 70,000 damage, will only deal 750 to the shield. Do note that the explosive damage will not only damage the shield, but the turret as well, still with the 7x multiplier. Depending on what weapon you use, you can actually destroy the turret before the shield would actually be destroyed. The turret will deal a base damage value that will change with the difficulty level. 2 for normal, 5 for hard, 10 for very hard, 15 for overkill, and 30 for death wish. This damage value will be modified by range, however, so any target at less than 8 meters will receive a 4 times damage multiplier. This quickly drops off to a 1.1 times at 10 meters and a 1 times at 15 meters. Turrets fire at 1000 rounds per minute and feed from a 400 round box. This gives the turrets 24 seconds of full sustained fire. Once the box is emptied, it will take 8 seconds for the turret to begin firing again. Of note, the turret, like player weapons, has a spread value of 0.5 degrees. This means at longer distances, turrets can easily miss players that evade rather quickly. Also of note, ECM jammers can cause the turret to target police units for its duration if placed close enough to the vehicle. While many players will recommend avoiding the turret, some situations may make killing it more appealing. Thankfully, the turret's tracking is slow, even for players wearing full body armor meaning you can easily dodge around it if you wish to destroy it. Unless you plan on blowing it up with a handful of RPGs, eliminating its armor is your first objective. Bullet Storm paired with a high damage assault rifle, semi-auto shotgun or submachine gun can make short work of the armor. 
However, by and large, the most effective way to quickly remove its armor is by directly hitting the turret with a Molotov cocktail or several incendiary grenade rounds. This will, in a matter of seconds, remove its protection and leave its camera exposed. Once it is exposed, throwing another Molotov cocktail can keep adding damage to it if you cannot spend much time eliminating it. Otherwise, Bullet Storm will be the best way of quickly killing it. If you're close enough and it's reloading, you can easily destroy it with one round of Bullet Storm Aced. Try to make sure other enemies do not sneak up on you while attempting this as they can interrupt your process if you're not careful. Firing a barrage of RPGs can also be an effective way of eliminating the turret. However, this can become consuming if your accuracy isn't great. You can easily get a shot or two off while it's not shooting at you, and fire a few more shots while it reloads. Be careful though as the sentry gun can destroy rockets and grenades mid-flight, which can quickly spell your demise. Overall though, the SWAT turret is best avoided, as it will require a great deal of effort to destroy. Only attack it if you need to regularly move past it, and even then, do so with caution. Teamwork oh, nice. will be your best friend too, allowing one player to distract it while the others unleash a hail of bullets. While the amount of punishment this turret can take is a bit unrealistic, it doesn't change the fact that this is a force to be reckoned with. Use teamwork and take advantage of its glaring weaknesses, or this turret will swat you like flies. Thank you very much for watching. Join me next time when we take a look at the heavy force and maximum force responders. But as always, my name is Richard, and until next time, farewell.